In this video, we're going to do an example of how to use the first kinematic equation and why it's often more useful to use than our intuitive method of, of calculating an object's velocity if we know its acceleration. So here's what we're going to do in this video. First, we're going to review how to find an object's velocity in an intuitive way if we're given its acceleration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a very similar example and show where our intuitive method of calculating an object's velocity if we know its acceleration breaks down. Here's our first problem. A car accelerates in the positive x direction from rest for three seconds at a rate of two meters per second per second, or two meters per second squared. What's the car's velocity after three seconds? So let's first pull out some useful information from this problem. Both the velocity and acceleration are positive. And what that's going to tell us is that the object's velocity is going to increase. So if we were to draw the object's velocity vector, which indicates both how fast and in what direction this car is going to start to travel, the velocity vector would be pointed in what I'm going to call the positive x direction. If I was to draw the acceleration vector, the acceleration vector is also going to point in the positive x direction. And the reason I know that the acceleration vector is pointing in the positive x direction is if we go back to our acceleration, it's a positive number indicating that the velocity is changing in the positive direction. Now if you remember one of the rules that we developed in a previous video, whenever the velocity and acceleration vector point in the same direction, it means that the object's velocity is going to increase. So now, if the car begins from rest, its initial velocity, which I'll indicate with a v with a subscript i, is going to be zero meters per second. It's initially at rest. It's not moving. And then what is going to happen is it's going to move in the forward direction. And after one second, the velocity is going to go from zero meters per second to two meters per second. The velocity has increased during this one second interval of time. And then what's going to happen is after one additional second, the velocity is going to go from two meters per second to what I'll call v2, the velocity after two seconds has elapsed, of four meters per second. After one more second, the velocity is going to go from four meters per second to a velocity of v3, a velocity after three seconds of accelerating, of six meters per second. Now one of the things that I hope that you see, and if you haven't, go back to one of our previous videos in which we developed this intuitive idea of how to calculate an object's velocity given its acceleration. But what I hope that you see is that during each one second interval of time, the velocity has increased by two meters per second. That's what it really means for an object to accelerate at a rate of two meters per second per one second. These two ways are equivalent of, expressor, of expressing an object's acceleration. We often say again, for shorthand, the acceleration is two meters per second squared. But in this case, really what that means is that the velocity is going to increase by two meters per second per one second. So the velocity increases by this amount during this interval of time. And we're only dealing with constant acceleration problems in this case. Now this was an intuitive, non-calculation based way of calculating an object's velocity given its acceleration. Now let's figure out how to use the kinematic equation with a very similar problem. So here's a similar problem, and in this case, a car is going to accelerate from rest for 2.67 seconds at a rate of two meters per second per second. What's the car's velocity after that 2.67 seconds? In the previous slide, we figured out if this is our car, it initially starts out at rest, and then what's going to happen is it's going to move in the forward direction, and after one second, it hits two meters per second. After an additional second, it hits four meters per second. And then after an additional second, or a total time of three seconds, it hits six meters per second. Now, with our intuitive way of calculating an object's acceleration, it doesn't allow us to calculate acceleration for fractions of a second. And that's where our first kinematic equation comes in handy, which I write as the final velocity equals whatever the initial or starting velocity is plus the acceleration of the object times the time during which this object is accelerating. Now as a quick review, remember this term here, this acceleration times the change in time represents how much the velocity increases during this interval of time. Now let's just summarize a little bit of information. Our initial velocity, the velocity at which this car begins, is going to be zero meters per second. Now the car is going to accelerate at a rate of two meters per second per second. 
and we know that we want to know how fast this car is going after 2.67 seconds. So now that I have all the information that this problem contains, I can go ahead and solve this problem for this final velocity. So in this case, our initial velocity, again, is 0 meters per second. To that, I'm going to add the object's acceleration, which is 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared, and then I'm going to multiply it by 2.67 seconds. Now, one of the things that you should notice is that this squared second term cancels out with this second term, and so I'm going to get a unit of a meter per second, which is the correct unit for velocity. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to solve this problem. So I'm going to have this 0 meters per second, to which I'm going to add 2 times 2.67, which I get 5.34, and in this case it's going to be units of meters per second. And to simplify, 0 plus 5.34 is going to be 5.34 meters per second. And that's going to be my velocity after a total time of 2.67 seconds has elapsed. And if you look at our picture, what it would look like, the car might be in this position, and in this case, after 2.67 seconds, which is greater than 2 seconds and less than 3 seconds, the car's velocity is going to be 5.34 seconds. A little bit less than what it would be if it had accelerated for a total time of 3 seconds, and a little bit greater than what it would have been after a total time of 2 seconds.